this is a ghost story and it's based on the idea I'm not getting the okay there we go um, it's based on the idea that uh, ghost stories are a little difficult to write because uh, any reasonable person would uh, likely leave and the any, re any reasonable person problem is this uh, when people when the reader feels like um, they would make a better choice than the character did then uh, the, the story kind of breaks down and most people read ghost stories and think as soon as the first weird supernatural thing happens they would get out of there um, whether or not we would actually react that way in real life or just try to explain it away over and over again I don't know but um, the it's the any reasonable person problem like in their mind a reasonable person would run away when something weird happened all right the spirit of count bassinger floated up behind dorothy's head even though she had pushed her chair flush against the wall all right let's say this was almost over he was sure She sat far from the fire with her eyes wide, with both fear and disbelief. She wanted this to all be untrue, some vision brought on by too much wine or too little sleep. Bassinger was sure. He did not hate Dorothy, no more than he despised any of the living. This was his house, though. Death might steal it from him in the legal sense, but in spirit, he... As he found himself now, this would always be his home, his haunt. So she had to go. Bassinger breathed out his cold, dead words into her ears. The small hairs moved and then stood up stock straight. You need to go, Dorothy. This is your last chance. It wasn't true, of course. If she chose to stay, he would find other, some other way to scare her off, just like all the ones before her. But the dramatic was what being a ghost was all about. She started to shake until the wood of her chair creaked and popped. She almost tipped the thing over, and Bassinger was so surprised by the convulsive force of her fear that he actually reached out with his transparent hands to catch to catch her if he could she'd like, likely fall right through but he could manipulate objects in the real world if he concentrated he was one of those spirits and did not want her dying in his house let her go haunt some other play some other space this one was taken Dorothy found her feet, and though she was weaving, wavering horribly, she stayed upright all the way down the hall, out the front door, and through the estate grounds, screaming bloody murder, as the saying goes. She did not even bother to pack her things before she left the house for the last time. Bassinger had told her this was her last chance, and to her credit, she believed him. Her things were quite expensive, though, and Bassinger never expected her to leave them. Working men with little time... Um, little time to indulge fear when money was involved returned to move her things out bassinger watched from the upstairs railings he supposed he needed to let them finish their work scaring them off would only prolong dorothy's ultimate eviction from his life so to speak um he could not let them leave without some fear of the place. Working men were a superstitious lot, but they ha also had children and neighbors who were tempted by abandoned houses, sometimes tempted because they, they were rumored to be haunted. It would do no good to let these men tell tales of how old Lady Dorothy was out of her mind. Bassinger moved along the railing to a loose board along one of the adjoining walls. As they hauled out the, the, her final dresser, Bassinger concentrated and pulled that board loose. It clattered to the floor and frightened the movers nicely. They exchanged a look, discussed checking, checking it out, and then decided to leave in a hurry. That would do fine. Uh, Bassinger had to concentrate even harder to move the board back into place. Fixing things was always more difficult and involved than tearing them apart. This was true in life and the afterlife. Bassinger's state was coming apart on its own much faster than he than her scared than her scared foe was falling apart much faster than oh good lord than he cared for good lord 
managed to misspell three words in a row. All right, faster than he cared for without his help. Um, the last little scare backfired a little. Lots of kids wanted to come see the haunted house. He could usually send them away screaming, but they kept coming back for more. It was tiring even for a spirit that no longer required sleep. All right, there we go. I like that. The problem was no matter how many of them he scared away, the property would always belong to someone. Dorothy might be willing to get rid of it, but someone would take the deal to buy it up. Count Bassinger was well aware of that. If he did, was well aware that if he did too good of a job scaring people out of his home, one day someone would simply knock the place over and sell the land for some crass development. Would Bassinger haunt the empty land or the new structure, perhaps some garish department store full of all sorts of people he despised in life and after? Maybe the destruction of the house would finally free him to go to whatever cloudy afterlife had so far been denied him. Who could say? Um, death and haunting did not come with an instruction manual. Bassinger had been raised uh, to fear God and memorize his word. Okay, what am I trying to say here? None of those verses prepared him for this. It had not prepared him for the loss of his sister in life either. But people loved to quote the Bible at times like that. Still, all those were, okay, hold on. Still, all those were problems for the living. He had his own problems now. All right. I think that's okay, and it foreshadows something I need to get to later. I don't know if I've done a good enough job. I'll need to mention it at some point. He hated Mr. Grigsby, though. Mr. Grigsby had money. That was no virtue, and anyone buying up an estate would have to have some. He was a fat man. He was a loud man. Even when he was home alone, he was loud, crude, and prone to vice. Count Bassinger would certainly be happy to be spared the private habits of this brute. As Mr. Grigsby laid in bed, ready to indulge himself yet again, Bassinger pulled out one of his darkest tricks. This was likely an emergency after all. Grigsby had to go, and he needed to be gone tonight. No more rattling chains or slamming doors. This was going to be an exorcism of the living. With no body, Bassinger seldom felt anything, but as he leaned hard into this supernatural effort, his mind and soul ached with deep pain. 
moisture gathered in droplets along the walls and started running down, dripping onto the uneven boards of the bedroom floor. Grigsby reacted to the noise and the odd drop in temperature, but probably could still write it off as the old house being leaky and drafty. Well, explain away this, you awful man, Bassinger growled. The moisture seeping out of the walls took on a bloody hue. Then Bassinger reached stretching the material of the wall as if it were elastic or some sort of sheet. Grigsby literally sat up and took notice. Bassinger opened his mouth to show his teeth in the stretching plaster. He set his eyes upon the living as they... Uh, he set up his eyes upon the living man as they stared at each other. Grigsby rolled out of bed and struck his head on the wet floor, adding real blood to the supernatural vision. The man struggled with his pants around his ankles, but still managed to get to his feet to flee. Bassinger added a cackling laugh that he would have never given in life, but ghosts had to use the fears of the living to get results. The house stood empty for... A couple decades it decayed to the point that bassinger almost wished someone would finally tear it down to put it out of its misery it was his home though he had fought to keep it all his life and he was still fighting for it nearly a century after his death he knew no other existence let's say now All right. Xander Kinger was something different. The man was renovating the house himself. That probably saved money, but he had to come by some money to afford. But he had to have come by some money somewhere. Somewhere. Some way. To afford to own and fix up an estate but then also lay around all day watching TV, playing video games, and riding that damn skateboard inside and out like he owned the place. He did own the place on paper anyway, but it was still disrespectful. Bassinger had shorted out the computers in the gaming room, which used to be... Hold on, let me fix a typo. Used to be a private dining room off the master. Every time, Xander had more computers ordered and installed without missing a single stream. Like Grigsby before him, Xander spent much of his time talking to the computers as if they could talk back. Much like, much like Grigsby arguing with himself out loud. Before him, Xander spent much of his time talking to the computers as if they could talk back. Um, Bassinger tried again. Get out or I will end you, boy. Nothing. No reaction. No running and screaming. He was sure Xander had heard. The boy shivered, but then just laughed like he was used to hearing threatening voices out of nothing or inside his own head. I'll say Or from inside his own head. Bassinger was starting to believe that only insane men bought haunted houses. All right. He tried the bleeding, stretching walls trick, too, that had to scare off anyone, but Xander Kinger simply held up a small recording device until Bassinger had spent all his energy on the wasted effort. Xander actually seemed disappointed when the device glitched out and failed to record the event. Count Bassinger was at a loss. What else could he do? After all that, slamming doors and knocking over loose boards seemed like quite a letdown. Is that a compound word? It sure is. Xander was a heavy sleeper for the few hours he did crash every night. When he was up at wee hours renovating or gaming, he laughed off every noise and apparition that Bassinger could manage. As Xander climbed a ladder to connect the wiring to the new electric light in the dining room now sporting um, dining room now sporting skating ramps. I'm gonna put quotation marks around this too. 
Bassinger decided it was time to push over the ladder. This would take a lot of energy and effort, but he could think of no other motivator at this point beyond a real threat to life. He was fully aware he might be dooming himself to an afterlife with this punk. Um, this punk co-haunting with him. That would be almost as bad as an afterlife with Grigsby. But this Xander Kinger, hold on, let me make sure I got all this down. But the Xander Kinger character needed to be convinced. Okay, I think I'm actually improving this story. I, I don't know that I landed the one before it in the edits, but I, I think I'm, I think I'm bringing this one around. This one's going to be closer to being what it needs to be. The ladder wobbled. I don't know why I have an ED at the end of ladder. Can you ladder somebody? The ladder wobbled. Finally, one foot lifted up. One plastic and no, I'll say metal and rubber foot lifted up and came back down. Sander still had time to climb down to safety. When the with the ladder lighter, Bassinger thought he might be able to tip it over now. But Xander took hold and locked some connector to the floor, which made the ladder immobile to Bassinger's fullest strength. That was quite an advance in ladder technology from Bassinger's time. And probably um, probably kept a few more ghosts from entering the world but it didn't help him now all right there we go I like that I feel, I feel like I'm getting more of a voice for this particular ghost character. Nice try, ghosty, Xander said, but this electrical is going in whether you like it or not. The future is now, my friend. Bassinger took a step back as best he could without a body. Xander was looking in his direction, but not directly at him. Can you hear me? Can you see me, boy? Xander took another look around as if he had sensed something, but still not really at Bassinger himself. The boy climbed the ladder again, and Bassinger spent the whole night trying to tip it over, but no luck. Xander even painted the ceiling. All that great original tile work up there, no small fortune in Bassinger's grandfather's time, and he just painted over it like that history was something to be covered. As Xander laid down, let's say, it was in rough shape, but still, respect, history. All right. Kim, Kim Basinger is an awful mean ghost. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she'd be lovely. As Xander lay down to sleep mid-morning, Basinger uh, prepared to slam doors and keep the boy awake as punishment. Um, Basinger felt, or let's say the count. The ghostly count felt so spent himself though he could probably still slam as many doors as he liked but 
he could probably still slam as many doors as he liked. He was that sort of spirit. But what was the point? Xander Kinger was determined. He seemed to know the place was haunted and only found it to be amusing. Was Xander snoring still spotted... Xander snoring... His skin and long hair still spotted with tacky paint. Bassinger retreated to a to a far dark corner in the unrenovated portions of the house. Light cut through the unpatched holes in the wall and beamed down upon the dirty floors. What was Bassinger fighting? What was to be gained? Did it matter if Xander or someone else renovated the place? Whether he moved in or sold it off, what difference did any of this make? Count Bassinger wished he could sleep, wished he could sink into oblivion for a little while, if not permanently, and said he sulked in the dark, in the dirty dark of his old forgotten estate. He was going to the pool again. Bassinger couldn't bear it. He followed behind the boy, shouting at his back. It was tougher to be seen or felt in the outdoor daylight. Bassinger could walk the grounds nearest the house, but he grew very thin when he did so. Still, he managed to pull down the branches of the overgrown landscaping to swat the boy on his helmet. Xander laughed that off, too, and said, I need to remember to get those trimmed. How about you just get out of my house, you pest? All right, I need a question mark here, too. No reaction. Xander tipped over the edge of the empty pool and started his never-ending one-man skate party. It was better than when all Xander's friends were over skating, but Bassinger still hated it. It was nice that the black water had been drained and the walls of the pool cleaned of slime, but why put, why not put water back in? Why use it for skating when he already used the walks and the hallways, too? You don't belong here. Xander laughed again as he completed some aerial feat, whether he was laughing at his own success or Bassinger's impotent anger, the ghost couldn't tell. On the next leap off the wall, Bassinger swatted at the board. Xander came down wrong and took a tumble. He was wearing pads but still bled on the concrete once he rolled to a stop. Got you, boy. There's more where that came from. I'm sure Xander returned to his feet, retrieving his bo retrieved his board and started up again. Had he heard? Was he hearing all along and just ignoring Bassinger's ranting? Was he too far up into his own head to be deterred? Bassinger knocked the board out of line again and again. Xander fell over and over, but kept getting back up. Maybe if the ghost were in a different mood, he might have even respected this, his, this tenacity. Eventually, Xander compensated and started spinning the board every time Bassinger tried to knock him down. He gave up and just laid in the bottom of the pool day and night for some time. He might have stayed there forever if the pool hadn't been filled with water again. Bassinger rode out, rose out of the clear water and made his way back to the house that now looked quite different on the outside. All right. Xander looked odd. Let's say even the landscaping was changed. It was clean, but very understated. Not nearly grand enough for an um, estate like this. Xander looked odd with natural colored hair that was starting to go a little gray. He still had tattoos that showed above his collar. None of the business people who stopped by seemed to care. Um, Xander made money with the computers in some way that Count Bassinger... Okay, hold on, let me fix this. Sander made money with the computers in some way that Count Bassinger was never going to understand. His time, the world he knew and understood and thought he understood, had passed him by long ago.
Bassinger found himself thinking more and more about his long dead family. Where were they? Um, especially the ones who had died young. What became of them? He hoped they were not alone like he had been all these many years. All right. Let's say Xander Kinger's wife was nice enough. His kids were a little wild, but the family seemed happy. Bassinger would not have gone with many of the style choices of the renovation, but he had to admit it was better than the place simply falling apart. Also, what could I do about it? Are you sad again, Mr. B? Bassinger turned to see the boy, Sterling his name was, staring at him. Bassinger sighed and looked away. I'm fine. Run along and leave me alone, boy. My mom doesn't believe you're real, the boy said. My dad does, I think, but she says we're making it up. Could you scare her one time just so she knows? Bassinger shook his head, such as it was. I've tried. She's immune to everything I have. Nothing will get you guys out, out of here anyway. Why would you want us to leave? Bassinger thought about answering, but deep down he hardly remembered. If he did run out this family, someone else would just move in. They might be worse the way Mr. Grigsby was. The way Mr. Grigsby had been. May his... Okay, I'm going to put a comma there. May his long dead soul never... Pop up anywhere Bassinger haunted. Before he had to say anything or drift off through some wall to get the boy to leave him alone, the dog started barking out back. Oh, they had a dog too, and it tended to growl if Bassinger stayed around the family too much. One more annoyance. This sounded different, though. The dog was afraid. Its barks, these barks, made the air jagged in a way only a spirit like Bassinger could see. Sterling seemed to feel it, too, though. Bassinger didn't like it one bit. He didn't expect to save the dog if it had decided to disturb some ven something venomous out there, but he soared through the wall, insulation, and wiring to fly out over the grounds to investigate anyway. Bassinger grew thin on the way through... He spotted some roaches moving inside the walls. Those would need to be treated before they got worse. Bassinger decided to tell the boy to mention it to his father once the dog was settled again. All right. Leave that touch in there. Um, Bassinger grew thin, and he felt thin when he saw what had Bones so upset. What had Bones, let's say Bones the dog. How long had she been under there? The girl, Sterling's younger sister, Apricot. Terrible name for a child, but she was the sweetest of the lot. She reminded Bassinger of his younger sister before she died of a weak heart. That's what they called it back then. That's who Bassinger thought of as he dove into the pool and concentrated all his energy on taking hold of her where she lay so still upon the concrete bottom. She felt heavier than the latter.
may be heavier than the whole world. Bassinger actually prayed for the first time since he had been very young, definitely the first time since he had died more than a century earlier. She, st she started to move. As he hauled her up so very slowly, he could see his own body waver within the water. He wondered if others might be able to see it too. Maybe even Sterling and Apricot's mother, Xander's wife. He focused on the work, though. There was an actual splash as he broke the surface. He wondered if that was just her or the both of them. The dog's frantic barking was clear again. Help me, mutt. Come on, Bones. Help me save her. The dog extended its snout and took hold of the edge of her soaked shirt. The animal bore down and pulled backward. It was enough that Bassinger could haul the girl up onto the edge. Uh, Sterling was out there, was out there screaming. Screaming bloody murder, as the saying went. Go get your father. Hurry, boy, go. Sterling heard and obeyed. He ran away. Um, he ran away. The way Bassinger could never get his father to do. Um, the girl wasn't breathing. He could almost see her spirit pulling away. He imagined her being trapped in that house with him. The boy and the dog might see her, but she would never grow up. And her mother would never see her again. He considered just for a moment that this loss might be the one haunting thing that would finally drive the Kingers out of his home. All right, that's a dark bit of business there. All right, Bassinger bore down, Bassinger bore down himself like the dog had done and tipped Apricot onto her side. Some water came out of her mouth, but she still wasn't breathing. He could feel his strength slipping as the sunlight passed through him. He reached his ghostly fingers through her back. The dog whined but did not growl at him this time. He could feel the water sweeping his fingers through it more belched out from her mouth. He felt her little heart too. Bassinger squeezed once. He squeezed harder a second time, then a third. She coughed up more water and rolled to her stomach as she started crying. Bassinger felt her heart beating against his insubstantial fingers before he drew his hand out of her back. She called for her mother and father in that order before gagging and crying some more. The dog licked her cheek and then moved to lick Bassinger, but just succeeded in passing through and whining. I appreciate the gesture just the same, Bones. The dog barked once and ran out to meet the family as they ran for the pool. The mother scooped up Apricot and held her tight as she returned to the house, crying herself. Um, she had a phone in her pocket. Bassinger knew that she could use to call for proper help. She was never without her phone, but seemed to forget it now. Someone needed to remember to call for help. The boy the boy shouted thank you mr. B and he followed his mother 
tell her to call someone, a doctor. He thought about mentioning the roaches in the wall, but decided now wasn't the time. All right. Oh, here come the machines again, but joke's on them. I'm almost finished. All right. He thought about mentioning the roaches in the wall, but decided now wasn't the time. Bones sat at Bassinger's feet as Xander, an older man, an older man now, but looking much beyond his years in that, an older man now, but looking well beyond his years in that moment of almost losing his daughter, stared down into the water. Count Bassinger hovered there, thinking about his sister. He had been powerless to save in life, and how he had felt Apricot's heart start up in his hand. It was a strong heart. One that refused to give up easily. He hoped as much anyway. Okay. Bassinger turned his head, dazzled by the sunlight for an instant, for an instant to see Xander looking in his general direction. You should drain that pool again and go back to skating. Thank you, Mr. B. Xander Kinger turned away and followed after his family. Bassinger lingered a bit longer and then returned to the house they shared. Bones followed along by his side. <laughs>